in this video, I'm gonna give you some simple productivity hacks that you can utilize to go ahead and maximize your day. Tip number 11 is to have strategic goals. Yeah, you got your annual goal, right? You wanna get a master's degree at the end of it, what have you. But you know you have to go to daily classes. This is how you need to break it down. Without going to daily classes, you don't have a weekly grade. You have quizzes every week, you need a weekly visit of your goals. Now you have monthly visits. You need a monthly grade, right? You need a quarterly one and thus and so forth and so on. So I want you to break down your goals strategically so that it makes sense to you. You have a big goal, chunk it down into daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and thus annually. If you don't break down your goals into small increments, your goals are just writing on a piece of paper. That smartphone or dumb phone or however you want to look at it, is actually killing your productivity. From the time we wake up, we're attached to it. We're constantly looking at it. So one of the things that I'd like for you to do is to put your phone away. Every day, I don't even touch my phone until the first hour goes by and I've done my morning sessions of either a walk or a meditation or journaling. That's when I start to actually utilize my phone. So learn to put your phone down when you need to be the most productive. Number nine is really bulking your time. Bulking your time is when you take your schedule and look at blocks or chunks of time, and you can call it time blocking or time chunking. Look at your schedule and go two to three or four hours. I'm gonna dedicate my whole day or that portion of the day to that particular goal. Whether you're a painter, maybe it's just to paint. If you're a poet, it's just to do that. If you're a computer programmer and you know you have to spend three to four hours, learn to go ahead and have a conviction over your time so you block out your time and nothing else gets in its place. Number eight is what I call Eat the Frog. So Eat the Frog is one of my most favorite books of all time by Brian Tracy. Shout out to you, Brian Tracy, for really helping me in my er early years establish routines and habits. But eating the frog is putting the things that you hate to do, don't wanna do, but gonna have the biggest impact on your life. Put that in your schedule and master doing those things first. For example, I have to write a book. Let me correct that. I wanna write a book, how's that? In the process of writing this book, it's like one of the things that I don't want to do mentally. Everything and anything that could come up in my mind comes up and I go, oh, I'd rather do that or I want to do this or I want to do that. And so to prevent myself from doing it, I just know that I have to eat that frog. And what I do is, so I put a lot of effort into that first word, that first sentence, that first paragraph, and then that's the first chapter. And once I get started, I'm amazed, now I can write, but it's really hard to do the things that you don't really wanna do, so eat that frog. Number seven is knowing your why. Knowing your why is really essential in productivity. Understanding why are you doing what you're doing? And if you look at your career, if you're not productive, you're not utilizing your time at the highest and best use. And if you're not doing it, why is it? But if you have a big, strong why, for example, when I first started out in real estate, I wanted to provide for my family. I wanted to do things for my mom that had sacrificed for me all her life. Because I wanted to do those things, I knew that there was no way I was gonna let a lack of motivation or a lack of spirit or even a lack of leads curtail my big why to knock me off so that I wouldn't be motivated. Some days I woke up and I didn't feel like doing it. But having that strong vision of you know, taking my mom for a trip around the world or something was powerful enough for me to drag me through moments when I didn't want to do it. So having that big why is really important. Number six, and I hate this one, is multitasking. You can't effectively task and then multitask on top of it you're not gonna get your highest and best use. So if you wanna be productive, stop texting and driving and writing an email at the same time. You know, stop writing and looking at a website while you're drawing. Stop doing some of those things and your productivity level is gonna go sky high when you just focus on doing that one thing for an extended period of time. And once you're finished, now you can go ahead and send that email and now you can go ahead and drive. Not only is it going to be safer for you to do, if you're multitasking, you're not doing anything or everything at the highest and best that you could possibly do it. Think about this. If you're watching sports, the people on the football field, you know, during, I don't know, Super Bowl, were texting while they were running around and running on the field and trying to catch a ball. Do you think that would be effective? No, right? It's silly for us to think that way, but most of us operate with that level of disregard and we think that we're accomplishing a lot by multitasking. Number five is adding a little bit of pain and pressure and or a deadline. So, you know, if I have trouble getting a 
have it down, I'll go ahead and say, hey, if I don't do this, or if I don't lose X amount of weight, or if I don't accomplish a personal record on this or whatever, I'm gonna give to this charity. It's a win-win situation, really. Or more than that, I'm going to go ahead and give to a cause I don't really want. I'm, this is not my world view. This is not my political view, but guess what? I'm gonna be giving this campaign or this candidate money because I failed to deliver on my task. Now you're motivated, right? God forbid we, you know, give to the blue team or the red team, you know, or one or the other, depending on what side of the coin are. Add a little pain and a little pressure or what works for me real well is a deadline. I know that I'm gonna shoot these videos on a Thursday. Guess what I'm doing on Wednesday night? And it's never been on Monday or Tuesday. It's always on Wednesday night where I'm trying to cram and come up with content. So human beings tend to work well with deadlines sometimes. For some people it works, some people it's too much pressure. But see where you are. Either is it pain, is it pleasure, is it pressure, is it deadline? Utilize those mechanisms to get you more productive. Number four is to limit your exposure to small interruptions. Your phone is a great example. Your chimes are going off. You sound like a foreign ice cream truck and it's going off, it's buzzing, it's interrupting you when you're having a great conversation, it's chiming you when you're in the middle of multitasking, it's interrupting you. So all of those small you know, interruptions, whether it's email, whether it's your social media, Limit all of those by maybe putting your phone on airplane mode or turning it off or putting it in the, in the next room. Now, that's a little different from when you wake up, don't touch your phone. It's in the middle of your day. So, you know, limit your distractions by just turning it off, turning it upside down, turning the chimes off, putting it in an, another room. Why are we taking measures that are so great? Because that phone is hyper tantalizing. It's designed in a way to distract you. So if you want productivity, you gotta learn how to deal with this because the same areas of the brain light up with sugar, with hard drugs, and with this phone because social media and all of those things are designed to get us to use our dopamine. Number three is workout and physical activity. Now you might think working out just gets me more tired. That's because we're not in the peak performance or shape. When you're in good shape or decent shape, you'll find that working out actually gives you more energy and alertness throughout the day. And I want you to really understand what I mean by physical activity. You have somebody that gets on a treadmill or goes for a lousy walk for 20 or 30 minutes, and they think that that's enough physical activity. You've got other people who do those crazy effing chin-ups like CrossFit does, you know, that swinging pendulum thingy, but whatever to that. That's not enough physical activity either. You might say, oh, you know, I really, really am completely tired at the end of my workout, but it's still only 15, 20, 30, 45 minutes or a, an hour, so be it. But you've got 16 hours of waking time. So a workout alone is not going to make up for bad choices, for bad diets, for a lack of sleep, for you know your nutritional issues. I want you to think of physical activity as constantly moving. Try to move every hour. Try to move you know at least a couple of times. I go for three walks in a daytime and you can say, oh my God, how do you have the time? Health is important to me. So I take a half an hour i'll take a phone call but i'm multitasking right this is a perfect place or i'm listening to audible or something like that so look at your day and your day should be around your physical activity great you worked out but that doesn't mean you eat a whole bunch of junk either so make sure that physical activity is part of your productivity number two one of the things that I've been sporting lately is a watch or some kind of wearable item so that it tracks your sleep. Now productivity is about nutrition, it's about the physical aspect, it's about the sleep as well. Think about this. When you're really, really tired and haven't had enough deep sleep or REM sleep, how is your cognitive function? How do you think on your feet? Uh, how well do you process information? How well do you drive? How well how alert are you? How focused are you? A lot of people think in this grind culture that you're only supposed to sleep a few hours. And I got caught up in it too. I've had weeks and weeks and months when I wasn't sleeping a lot. And that definitely affected my sharpness, my wit, my ability to think on my feet. So track the amount of sleep, just like you track calories and know exactly how many hours you're getting. And you might have to change some things around like doing away with the cell phone or doing away, you know, looking at blue lights at the evening time. Any one of those. So you have to adjust your habits, but definitely track your sleep. Lastly, the greatest productivity thing you can ever use is the power of the N-O. A lot of people don't use this, but master this and you've mastered your schedule. Say no to everybody that comes up that's not scheduled. 
Say no to the things and the distractions that come up. Say no to every time an opportunity comes for you to do the easy thing and not the right thing. It's a complete sentence. You can use no quite readily. There's no charge to it, but it's gonna cost you a little bit. It'll cost you some feeling sometimes. It'll cost you some friendship sometimes. It might even cost you a relationship here and there. But saying no is powerful. That's the greatest productivity tip of all time. If you're saying yes to everything, that means you're not saying no often enough. And what suffers is your why. Your big goals, your big dreams, your big aspirations. That's why the years go by because we fail to say no. Things that matter the most should never be at the mercy of the things that matter the least in life. So say no to the things that don't really matter and say yes to the things that do matter in life. If you like the material I just gave you and it's gonna save you some money, go ahead and hit that subscribe button.